Hey guys, Paul here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I have a brand new front instrument cluster display for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y to share with you. This is the newest version of the instrument cluster display with really low profile and high quality graphic and high quality display really low as you can see so it shouldn't block the airflow from the AC in front of the driver this display also has the CarPlay and Android Auto plus the front forward camera optional function so in today's video I'll show you what comes in the box and then step by step installation and then we'll check it out and test it out how it works and see how it looks in my Tesla Model 3 now let's go Let's see what comes in the box of this new instrument cluster display for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y from Tesla C. So here what came in the box. Um, this is the steering wheel column display itself and wire harness for the OBD port and also you have an option for the front forward camera and this is the camera itself, this is the wire harness for the camera and all the hardware and screw you need also the instruction manual so let's check out the display first so it came um, separated with the steering wheel column cover and the display so you basically just have to attach this and then use the screw to attach it we'll do that before the installation so let's check out the display first so this is the actual display this is 8.8 .8, I believe um, diagonally inch display it's really uh, thin and low so you will get a better airflow for the front driver airflow just right in front of the steering wheel but it's really wide so you get a lot of information on the display this display also has the apple carplay and android auto and this is the steering wheel column so we have to replace this with the oem steering wheel column we'll show that later in the video and this is the wire harness for AMD car but today I'll be installing in my Tesla Model 3 this 2021 Tesla Model 3 with Intel processor but my car has the port on the side um, on the front passenger side panel so I still can use the AMD version so I believe you have the car that is 2021 and newer you show your car should have this um, make sure you check on your car first before you order it on the product page they should have an option for you to choose between the Intel and AMD the front forward camera so you basically install this underneath the front bumper where the air vent to cool down the battery is we'll show you later in the video really nice instruction I mean they're all English for the first time um, that I have with you a few of these products so it's really clear instructions on how to operate and how to navigate the display now before we go and install it let me show you how to um, install this on the single column the reason they detach this because so they can keep the package um, nice and compact and small for shipping reason in this installation you will need a small screwdriver and the trim removal tools I got these from amazon.com I'll put the link in the description down below too and also a masking tape this will help organize your cable underneath the dashboard so first thing first let's use the screwdriver so basically you just have to install this display on top of the steering wheel column cover make sure you thread the wire to like a bigger space in the back here so these are all the data wire and the camera wires so make sure you face the display to the pick up up side that's where it's facing you behind the steering wheel so just put this one right here one by one and then the red one in and then just pull the wire down now you have the display um, basically in place and the wires are down here and just use include screws over right here put it in only two one and two and then just screw it in and that's it we are done 
complete the first part of the insertion. Looks really nice and wide and really cool. Remind me of um, the display you see, I think, in the Fisker Ocean. The display also has this USB C port in the back, so you can use it to install the software update in the future. All right, now um, before we go and install the display in my Tesla Model 3, let me show you where you can get the display. You can get this new 8.8 inch instrument cluster display from Tesla C or Tesla C. Dot com. There are a few options here you can get for Model 3 Intel which is 2021 and order card and Model 3 AMD processor which is the 2022 and newer card. Same thing with the Model Y here and they also have an option for the new Model 3 Highland 2 and here is the screen size. 8.8 inch screen with the camera option so with or without the cameras only $16 um, different or $17 this is different I should say so if you are interested you can use my special discount code that TC for extra discount and this is the price after the discount with the camera all right now let's go and install it in my Tesla Model 3. Now let's start the installation. First thing first you need um, these trim removal tools. So you have to remove this panel right here and then this one and then the whole panel here on the door seal and you have to remove the door seals. Um, this is really easy to remove. There's no glue to it um, and I have done many times. I have removed this many times. Never have issue with water leaking in at all. And then we can remove the dashboard so we can after that we gain the access to that passenger side panel blue obd port first let's remove this panel right here so use one of these two removal tools and then apply it open and then just pull it out as you can see here no screw at all three clips three plastic clips that's it now this panel right here just pull it out and then that's it now you just remove the door seal not entirely just this bottom part right here and just leave it hang now the next part is this one right here so there'll be a plastic locking clip to hold the door seal in place use one of that tool there you go here's the clip should be able to um, remove this whole door seal out entirely because underneath the no screw again pretty much all the locking clips there are the locking clips one and then two and a few in this area now this whole door seal is removed so after the door seal part is removed, now you have the access to this 20 pin OBD plug, this open port so there's nothing plugged into it. You can just basically plug it in and then this is for the data and the, for the power you will need to uh, pass through the power from this white plug right here. And if you have a Model Y, it should be in here on the side panel, you have to pull the panel out and the same plug will be in there this one out and then let me show you real quick you see that blue port right there my and my car is 2021 with intel processor um, but it still has this part check on your car if you have 2021 model 3 or model y you might already have this access right here so I have to go through the difficult one which is on the main computer unit underneath here it's really hard to get access to you have this one then it's so easy to do now before we plug it in let's remove the dashboard first we already moved this part we have to remove the same panel on the driver's side so this is the same panel again same thing use that too and then just pop this panel out here you go, same panel. 
now you should be able to, able to remove the dashboard again dashboard the same things all clips no screw at all unless you have a newer model y um, let me show you this is model y long range 2023 um, austin factory this was delivered in may like towards the end of may you would have to unscrew this one screw on each side right here it should be t20 to unscrew it then after you unscrew then you will be able to lift and remove the dashboard uh, make sure you unscrew it first otherwise you if you try to remove without unscrewing it you might break this wooden part now let's remove the dashboard so just pull um, this part out right here make sure you pull the whole thing not just this piece right here just pull up and then torch yourself there you go do same thing on the other side same thing here pull it up and then torch yourself and then the whole thing should come off next let's remove the steel wheel column cover so you have to remove two plastic clip here this will hold this part of the steel wheel column cover in place so just use the same tool right here and then just pull out same thing on this side before we remove the steering wheel column cover, make sure you move the steering wheel out, down, all the way down, and then all the way out. So it's easier to remove this part. So now we have the steering wheel all the way out. Just pull this part, so you can see it's kind of loose a little bit, and then use the smaller trim removal tools. Go in, as you can see, it already comes up, and then in and out. So this one and one here, only two clips. Same thing on this side. And then just in and then twist. And then the whole steel will come, will come out. Um, next we have to take this one and then place on the one with the display. To remove this part right here, just remove this part first on the side, both sides. And then just pinch these locking clips, four of them, pinch it, do it all four. There you go, now you just remove this and keep the original one. Now you just have to install this part right here on the one with the display. So same thing here, just put on the four clips, as you can see, and then just Lock this side and lock that side, and we are done. All right, so um, I'm not going to install this yet. We will have to test the display before we install on the stable column. So now let's connect to that port, and then we we'll test out the wire harness and the display. Before we plug in the wire harness to the OBD port over here, I would highly recommend you to turn off the car first. So to do that, just go to the main menu right here with the car icon and then go to safety and then scroll all the way down and then power off. Now we turn off the power of the car and should be safe to plug and unplug these ports right here. First let's plug in the data port since it's already open port. So you just have to plug in the wire harness that included in the package and then boom, plug it in now we get the data to the display now we need the power which is this white one right here so just unplug so pinch in and then remove and then now we just plug in the one from the display and then just plug it in and we just plug back in the one from the car to the one from the display done now we get the power and the data. Now let's plug it to the display and then test it again. Um, make sure you just connect blue and blue and red to red to the display. And voila, let's power up. Now let me turn on the car real quick. All right, the car's on. So the display is power up. Really, really cool, really nice. 
um, display as you can see it has the new uh, model 3 highland actually um, the first display I haven't seen with the actual model 3 highland on the display really good and high quality display actually all right now and we know it's actually working um, this uh, yellow one is for the camera so before we install this let me show you how to um, run the camera wires to the front of the car so the first step to get the camera wires fish through the front area of the car is to remove this panel first now you can remove the front top this one right here with four bolts one two three four and this one more plastic clip that you have to remove this one right here so remove this then you'll be able to remove the whole top out after that you should be able to fish the line down here and then come down to this um, radiation vent area right here and you can mount the camera down here facing front also you get the fishing light up and then you can go through under here and I think this is only the way that you can get into cabin space in the front passenger space is that air vent pipe right there so you just try to fish through that into the space inside and then connect now let's attach the front camera um, just find the middle of the uh, front bumper vent on the bottom right here so you'll be attaching on the top part right here and make sure you clean the surface first let's attach it on the plastic part right here make sure it's in the middle and then just press and hold it for a few seconds and it should be done now we just have to run this wire go underneath on the inside and connect to the rest of the camera wiring now you're done with the camera wiring just run together um, with the rest of the wire and then manage it um, along the dashboard you can see I put the masking tape along the dashboard so I can uh, manage the wire let me run this and then I'll show you after it's done I'm done with the wiring on the dashboard here the reason why I need the masking tape so I can manage all the wiring on underneath the dashboard so when I put the dashboard back in it doesn't the wire doesn't block these clips that will be attached to the top part of the dashboard so we just run um, just you know far enough so we should be able to connect to the display right now we just have to um, cover put all of these parts back and then put on the display on the stainless column and the dashboard will be last so put this part first we'll leave this one open after the dashboard is done we'll put this one on now let's connect the wiring first before we put the stimulus column and the display back in and make sure just put on the right color yellow to yellow blue and red all right now let's manage all that plug underneath and then just put it you know the same way we took it out pretty much Boom. we are pretty much done with the installation now we just have to put the dashboard back on now let's put the dashboard back on same way we took it out um, put it in down first it goes underneath the vent and I just press it down this side too which is all down this plastic panels on same spot and last but not least driver side panel that's it all right the installation is done let me show you how it looks in my Tesla model 3 
Wow, this pair looks really, really good. Much better than I was expecting it. Really nice, high quality, um, really good graphic too. Let me peel off, I already totally forgot. There you go, now you can see much better. As you can see, it's really wide. Like, almost um, the whole steering wheels, like fit the whole thing. Let me show you everything better angle there it fits pretty much the whole space that you have on the steering wheels right here but it's really low and it's low enough that you probably get the AC um, the airflow from the front AC here let me show you real quick and let's test it out we, we still can't get the AC up here okay now you see a better angle of the display on the side view you can see this is the air vent so it's low enough it could um, possibly get some airflow from here all the way through the steering wheel so you still can get that AC in your face so for those of you who lives in a hot climate or in the summer even here in Colorado it gets pretty hot so you can get that airflow through your face and let's test it out see here this is the A4 paper so it has some weight to it you can see the air is going through the steering wheels from here or even um, out here you can, you can still feel the airflow to your face so you can still feel a lot here or even up here I think you can get actually more up here because the air will go up and then of course you can feel it through your face even down here so you get less a little a little bit less down here you get more up here all right now we know it doesn't block the AC which is really really awesome now let's go through the basic information that is showing on the display real quick so this display only has one UI so this is the single UI that you will see um, as I mentioned before when we were installing it you have this brand new model 3 highland um 2024 model 3 that is rendering in the front on the left hand side and then you have um, time and temperature and all lettering all the fonts it's really big so it's big enough that you don't have to actually you know try to look at it to see it and you have the battery percentage on the right hand side also the range what's left on the battery and your odometer in the middle on the right hand side you have big speedometer and you have regen um, power and regen just right below the speedometer and your gear selector big on this right hand side you will have all the warning lighting right up here on the top left hand corner and when you want to go to the setting it's really simple you swipe to the right there you go and then select the setting so the display is touch screen and of course Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatible so here's uh, what you can do on the setting language time format and this is the A HD is the front forward camera um, you can turn on or off so you don't if you have the option that's have no camera just turn it off and you can do um, setting on the camera too you can see the camera is showing right now you can do resolution up to 1080p and you can do the frame rate from 25 to 30 um, frame per seconds and the rotation of the camera also if you want to mirror or flip the camera and then brightness so there's a lot of adjustment that you can do here on the camera setting brightness um, saturation contrast so we can save and let's go back to that setting menu again and you can have you have time zone tire temperature unit and the steering wheel control on so basically it's this one right here you can turn on or off and you can adjust the display um, the car color to whatever car that that matches your car and the temperature unit brightness and also the appearance you want to do auto or just follow whatever it is on the main display and then you can just adjust to um, day and night mode let me show you a night mode real quick we'll go back 
go back to the car or to the main this place is the Naimo it looks really nice and clean let's go back to the auto again so we can finish um, the setting so wireless you can um, change from Apple CarPlay to Android and High Car. I'm not sure what High Car is. Audio SUD mode or phone, so you can adjust audio uh, to go through your phone or SUD, which is this display. And then you can do a setup. You can connect the display to Wi-Fi. Just turn on the Wi-Fi, connect to your Wi-Fi at home. Make sure you are home to so connect to the Wi-Fi. And then after that, you wanna do software update via um, Wi-Fi which is internet just checked here and then you can download the software update right straight to your display here you how you download the software update with Wi-Fi so just you know connect to your home Wi-Fi and then you can download the software update all right so these are all the setting of the display really really simple let me change the display to the CarPlay functions so I have it connect to my phone and basically what you have to do is just scroll up and down the right steering wheel button then you will change to the CarPlay mode. So there's no um, setting or adjustment that you can change to a full screen. Um, I think it's big enough because the display is really really long so you still have all the car information on the right hand side of the display and you have all this space for your CarPlay. All right, let's test out the audio output on the Apple CarPlay on the display. So you basically just have to change the output on your phone because the main source is basically your phone, not the display. The display is just showing um, the graphic for the phone because that's what the CarPlay does. So just, you know, swipe down and then select the output. Right now, the output is to the car as you can see. So if I play on the display, you will hear the sound from the car speaker. You can also manually activate and deactivate the front forward camera function. So let's say you put in a drive, here you go, the front forward camera will appear, but if you want to deactivate it manually, um, just use the right scroll wheel or the right button and then scroll down really fast like not one click like this but fast like this then it'll go back to the main display so if you are on the main display driving or slowing down and try to get into a parking and want to see in the front manually you can just scroll same thing scroll down fast and then the front forward camera function will appear just like so same thing go back again and Again, if you wanna change to the Apple CarPlay instead of scroll down fast, just one click, then you change to the Apple CarPlay. All right, it looks really, really cool. I love the quality of the display. This is what surprised me the most is the quality of the display. It looks really, really clean. And right now we saw everything um, with the setting and all the layout of the display. Let me show you um, the display while I drive the car and show all the functions, including the CarPlay too. All right, now let's go test out the display and see what it looks like while I drive the car. So the first thing when I shift to drive, the display will change to the front forward camera mode as you can see it's really good quality camera really nice no not pixelated at all and as i keep driving we'll see how fast do i have to go um, to get back to the normal screen so there you go so 20 about 22 miles an hour and the display will go back to the normal display love the design actually um, that really wide display and low profile so as you can see the AC is going through um, nicely even I turn on the AC not um, that strong probably like four number four on the fan and I love the design of the UI it's really clean really good quality uh, graphic and let me show you something real quick. So the color is really similar. It's a little cooler one shade than 
um, the main display but this is probably the closest um, um, coloring wise uh, from the aftermarket display and the main Tesla display as you can see when I come to a complete stop but still on the drive and on the whole mode then the car will change to this top view with the PSI or the tire pressure so we can see monitoring the tire pressure right now and if I keep driving then it shift back to that and this is what it looks like when it you I put on the turn signal and the display also has the speed limit on the top right hand corner really handy really nice so this is what it looks like in the wider um, angle I like how big the um, the speedometer is so keep my eyes in front of me instead of you know look back to that display so it's it's big enough that keep my eyes here right in the front of the steering wheels instead of you know keep looking at back here because some display has like small smaller speedometer that's why you 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 can't um, you kind of get used to look back to the display but now you have a bigger speedometer so it keeps your eye in front of you okay now let's try autopilot mode as you can see the lane changed to blue see the lane changed to blue and it's showing the blue steering wheels as when you're on autopilot just like the man this way but it doesn't have the autopilot warning or a blind spot or lane departure warning let's go back at least it has that um, autopilot status and here's what it looks like on um, the car play mode looks real good I mean Turn right on Chessmore Street and the sound it's coming out of the car speaker as you can hear turn right then turn right so you can see um, the map clearly when you want to use the Apple CarPlay on here I think it's just the display is big enough um, to see all the details and the maps on Apple CarPlay so I have been driving um, Tesla for three years now almost three years and the maps has been great and but only issue is that like when you drive somewhere that you're not familiar with and you have to change the highway or freeway um, you know when it pops right here small really small um, side of what highway and what lane you have to keep in so you really have to like to focus on that part when you change um, the lane so that's the part I don't like and sometimes when you navigate to certain address it will take you to the wrong place that's why a lot of people want to have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto on um, inside the Tesla this is what it looks like when it's in the dark mode or night mode and on the both on both of the display as you can see it matches really really well with the display um, the main display of the car all right let me show you what it looks like um, driving it at night yeah what it looks like at night let's go as you can see quite dark at night but the camera can still see really clear and it's not pixelated at all and I set it to auto so it just follow the dark mode like the main display as you can see the brightness on the display um, perfectly equal with the main display we'll go a little faster so it's changed to the regular display there you go you can see just I think the brightness is exact the same as the main display only the difference is the color so the lower part of this display is a little brighter which is gray and the top part is all black that's why it's a little different even at night the graphic looks really really nice and awesome let me switch to carplay so just scroll down one time or up or down doesn't matter 
change to CarPlay, change to the map. Looks great so far. And of course you can easily switch back to the main display. Just scroll up or down and you switch back to this one. As you can see in the video, the display worked really, really well after I tested with different functions that it offers the Apple CarPlay, the front forward camera, and the graphic on the display both at night and during the day. It looks really, really good. I love the graphic a lot compared to the rest of the display that I have reviewed before. This is probably one of the best quality graphic on the front instrument cluster display. Let me know in the comment down below what you think about this display. I'll make sure to put the link of this display and also special discount code for you in the description down below. Thank you so much guys for watching today's video. Make sure to click like if you like the video. Make sure to subscribe for more awesome contents like this. We'll see you on the next video. Peace.